We've used the OpenXML table valued function several times and we've passed it a handle as a parameter and we've passed it a row pattern as a parameter. Now let's formalize the parameters we've used to know exactly what it's expecting and show you one more optional parameter that can really make your life a lot easier. Before getting started, go ahead and open up lab 4.2 starter.sql from the resources folder. Once you do, it's going to look like this. Now, if you run it and it runs fine, well, that tells you that the XML is well formed. Okay, let's turn this XML into prepared XML and know how to get it by getting a handle that represents that memory space. So let's say declare at handle doc, which is an int, and let's go ahead and set at handle doc to whatever is returned from the SPXML prepared document sprock based on the XML you pass into it. And let's find out exactly what handle it's giving us. Let's run this. Looks like we've got handle one, so the first one's in. Now let's go ahead and select from the open XML table valued function using handle number one. Now this first parameter we've used before. The first parameter for the open XML function says where is the prepared XML for me to shred? The second one says, what level do you want things defaulted to? Because if you're at the level where the data is and you name the field the same, you don't need any of those fancy column patterns. So let's go ahead and specify where all of our data is. Let's run this. Okay, we get all this fancy array of data and metadata, but we want to turn it into just a tabular result. So what we need to do is put with, and in here, let's specify the fields we want. Now we're in luck. The names the fields are in XML is the same as they want in the tabular result set. So, in other words, product code will be called product code, quantity will be called quantity, unit price will be called unit price, and product name will be called product name. So, here's what we're going to do. We are going to specify the fields. The product code, which is an int. Now, we're not going to specify any column pattern because we're at the right level and we match the name. And we're going to do quantity, which is also an int. And we're going to do unit price, which is a money data type. And finally, product name. And we'll turn that into a var chart 50. Okay, let's run this and let's see if we get all four values. Okay, we have this attribute, we have this attribute, and we have this attribute. But the product name element did not seem to come through. That's because by default, when you use the open XML and you're matching on an exact name, like we are from here to here, it looks for attributes. This is the exact correct name for this element at this level, but elements are not searched by default. So if you want to search for elements and not attributes, let's put a third optional parameter here and let's say two, which means element. Let's run this. Now we get our element, but none of our attributes. Well, if you specify one, which is the default, you'll get all of your attributes. But we're not getting our element. Well, what if you want to tell this function, look, at that level, it's either an attribute or an element, and I don't want to do any of these fancy column patterns, so look for both. In that case, you're going to change the flag to 3. Let's go ahead and run this. Very cool. Notice we get both attributes and elements without specifying any custom column patterns. Time for Lab 4.2, Skill Check 1. Open the lab 4.2 sk1.sql file and use the correct flag parameter value in your open XML function to grab the ID and total sales from the Big Foods store row pattern. You should not be using any custom column patterns to get this result. Skill check 2. 
Open the lab 4.2sk2.sql file and use the correct flag parameter value in your open XML function to grab the name and status from the company structure room row pattern. You should not be using any custom column patterns to get this result.